I want to change the world. How do I know I'm ready to act? We miss out on making real change when we leave life out of the equation. One of the first things to recognize in changing the world and knowing when you're ready is to grow your skillfulness with your ability to read your environment. Daniel, what does that mean to read the environment? Well, that would start with being awake to who you are in the environment. And so we can be on autopilot and just be doing what we need to do without actually being present to what's happening around us. So reading the environment would be what's happening around us in the environment and also then having a sense of what's moving through. I'd say reading the environment maybe is more important leaning towards what's moving through what wants to happen in our environment so that we're able to catch patterns from the future emerging because we're not just kind of respond or reacting to our environment. We're responding to what we sense about it, which means that we're present to multiple levels of what's moving in our environment so that we're reading what's moving through and what wants to happen maybe is the first place to start. That's great. It seems like that takes a little bit of sensitivity to signal, to noise, uh, to be able to accurately read and know what's going on around. Because you could pick up something that's really noise and act on it, but it wouldn't be you changing the world. It would be you acting from something that seemed interesting to you, but it wasn't really reading the environment accurately. So it seems like there's some skill and some sensitivity needed for some of this, Daniel. How would you know, you say you have an intention that there's something in the world you'd like to change and knowing when it's time to act on that change that you would like to make happen in the world means that with that intention, you'd be noticing certain things because you have that intention. Like when you, they say, if you buy a Volkswagen, you see Volkswagens everywhere or Tesla or whatever the make is, you'll suddenly see them everywhere. So saying that there's a change you want to make in the world, and how do you know when it's time to act on it? Reading the environment then would be filtered to some degree by that intention for the change that you see that you want to make happen. So reading the environment, then what's moving through and what parts of the landscape are speaking to each other transcontextually, then would give you a sense of when to act because you'd be reading the environment for high signal to noise, as you were mentioning, the change you want to make in the world. So can you see in the world the hints for the change you want to make? That's great. So added skillfulness with reading the environment will require some of the skills that we talked about in our previous video, being able to recognize patterns incoming from the future, as well as cultivating transcontextual design awareness. The thing that that points to for me then, Daniel, is considering where life is left out of the equation. It seems like in business, we often leave life out of the equation because mostly what we're allowed allowing for is the exploitation and extraction of humanity in, in our ecosystem. And so noticing the patterns, reading the environment, but also considering co-creating with life. What's the gap where life is getting left out of the equation? Part of that, reading the environment for what's moving through. Life creates life. And when we leave life out of the equation, we can make decisions like something that might pollute the air, the land, the water, or be extraction at a level that the planet isn't really able to keep up with. There's that level of leaving life out of the equation that we're lessening the planet's ability to maintain itself and recover and restore. There's also the evolutionary or the re regenerative motion towards what life would want for the planet, like the kind of environment that when we say life, the joy of life, the full expression of life, the kind of uh, environment we would want to live in, like sort of the evolutionary impulse is life creates life. And so when we leave life out of the equation, then we find ourselves often working at cross purposes, even with the planet's ability to heal itself or to an environment. One of the immediate consequences of COVID was the shutdown that happened initially. We were surprised at how quickly the environment healed, how quickly the water cleaned itself, how quickly 
life came back to waters where there wasn't a lot of life in, in those waters. So when we leave life out of the equation, when we're reading the landscape and, and saying, here's a change I would like to make in the world, and how do I know when it's time to act on that? Including life in the occasion, and also not just polluting the land, the air, and the water, but also then in the equation, when you're reading life and you're reading the environment, what's moving through and what wants to happen is including what life would want as a thing to change in the direction to move in. Yeah, what you're pointing to is something that we actually work to train people in and design leadership from, which is becoming a conscious participant in the weaving of what's happening and how life is moving through. We're often in a dance with the unknown. And so being able to make decisions, participate as, as a conscious participant, moving things forward as we're reading the environment and being conscious of life, us becoming and designing ourselves as conscious participants with life in the weaving of what's happening seems pretty critical to some of these wicked problems and challenges that we're facing. Yeah, I think that sometimes we can get caught up in our excitement about what's possible and become a little self-focused in a way that isn't conscious of our place in, let's say, our stewardship and our ability to respond um, to the other players that we're working with, you could say the other stakeholders in our enterprise. And so my being conscious of my participation in the events of our time and our, let's say, the stakeholders in our enterprise, our community, being conscious then of what we want to change in the world and what's moving through the environments, reading the landscape of our world, saying that then what's my agreement, what's my conscious, kind of my conscious of who I'm being in the manner in which I'm approaching, even how I'm reading the landscape from a place of my place in that, choosing consciously then how we will participate in the highest manner that we could imagine for the highest outcome that we could imagine for what wants to happen and what's moving through the landscapes affected by our intention to make a change. Yeah, that points to a different mapping, if you will, of the world, oftentimes from the past moving into the future, which is mostly what we've been trained to do. We come from a certain map that we've been educated in or that we use to think things through or to make decisions from. And what you're pointing to in becoming a conscious participant means we have a different map that gives us a different way to read the environment, that gives us a way to recognize unprecedented patterns incoming from the future. Is that what you're pointing to? Yeah, well, to have a trans rational map means that we're including a wider range of threads and frames in how we're creating that map and that transcontextual cross-discipline, cross-cultural, cross-functional, cross-domain sense of the context then from which we're making decisions about the change that we would want to make in the world and when we would act on that is coming from that wider map that is more cross-contextual. Yeah, that's good. That takes some transrational awareness, if you will, to bring all of that forward. You've gained some insight into how to know if you're ready to make a change in the world. Daniel and I have touched a bit deeper on transrational awareness. To learn more about awareness, watch our next video, How to Improve Self-Awareness When Making Business Decisions.